Whenever I try to convert a friend into a plant parent, most likely the first thing they say to me is that I've killed a plant before and I don't want to get another one because I'm afraid of killing it. And I completely understand that plants are living beings and you don't want to be responsible for being a killer. In this video, I'm going to talk about plants that just refuse to die. Hi, I'm Viona from Feline Jungle and in this video, I'm going to talk about plants in my collection that just refuse to die. These plants are perfect for any of you who are beginners or just any of you who are looking for low maintenance plants. These plants are really good at adapting to their environment, so you really don't need grow lights or humidifiers to keep them alive. The first plant I want to talk about is a plant that you guys probably all know. It's the plant that I have right here. The Monstera deliciosa. This plant is known for its unique leaves. It develops these splits in it and not a lot of plants have that and as it matures it even has these holes that develop in its leaves. It's also known as the Swiss cheese plant because of this characteristic. In terms of basic care, this plant really tolerates any lighting condition, but it thrives the most in bright sunlight. So I have this one living in my south facing window so it gets a lot of direct sunlight. But I've had other Monsteras in my collection that just tolerated different lighting conditions. So for example, I have a Monstera that I had in my old apartment and that apartment basically had low light and even when it transitioned into this apartment, it did completely fine. It just adapted to its new environment. But even if you overwater this plant, like I've had my other Monstera that had root rot because I watered it too much and it was completely fine. It didn't show any signs of like being unhappy or sad. It was actually giving me a new leaf, which is why I didn't recognize that it had root rot. After I identified the root rot and cut it off, it did completely fine. These plants grow a lot of aerial roots, which makes it very hardy. You can basically cut at any point where there's root and it'll just grow for you. So this specific one that I have right here is a cutting that I bought from a plant shop in Chinatown called Dai Hing. And they were selling these large Monstera cuttings. Since I got it, I put it in a jar of water and it just started growing roots like crazy. You can see the difference between the old roots and the new ones. The new ones are these white ones that are over here and the brown ones are the ones that I bought it with. Last week I even discovered that it was giving me a new leaf which is crazy because now it's the winter and it's just living in water and completely doing its own thing. This plant really does well in all types of different humidities. The most ideal one is above 40%, which is why I have the humidifier here. But in my old apartment, I was not that into plants that I had additional humidifiers and grow light and it was still doing really well. Obviously, if you don't give it the right environment, it's not gonna grow as fast, but it'll still survive and you know do its own thing. If you already have the Monstera Deliciosa in your collection, here are some other Monsteras I can recommend you. This is the Monstera Stantiana aurea, and this is the Monstera Peru. These plants require a little bit more care than the Monstera Deliciosa. The second type of plant I want to recommend you guys are Hoyas. These trailing plants are characterized by their succulent leaves, and generally the more succulent the leaves are, the less likely you can kill these guys because these leaves retain a lot of water which also means that you don't have to water them that much. These plants like to have a little bit more light so here I have them right against my south facing window. They just like a lot of bright light but they also tolerate different lighting conditions. I have Hoyas all around my house. I have them in corners that only have light from the light that reflects off the wall. So those also grow like crazy. They just really good at adapting to their environment. In terms of watering, these plants like to be under water and these plants show you signs when it needs to be watered just by looking at the leaves. So the leaves will feel a little bit soft and look wrinkly. That means there's not enough water in the leaves and that's when you can water them. Now that it's in the winter, I like to water these once every two weeks, but in the summer, I like to water them once a week. 
and especially these Hoyas that I have right up against the window, the water evaporates a lot faster because the sun is always hitting on it. So these ones I water a bit more in the summer. In terms of humidity, these plants are not picky at all. I've had these living in like 90% humidity levels and it did completely fine. Obviously, if you give it above 40%, these will be a lot happier and will start growing these aerial roots that you see over here. It's pretty interesting because these plants have succulent leaves, people always assume that they don't really need that much humidity, but they don't like to be watered that much, but they like high humidity. This specific one that I'm holding right here is the Hoya Crimson Queen. It's characterized by variegations along the edges and it has a green center. It's always a surprise when a new leaf comes out because it has different features like this one is mostly green and these come out completely white. It's really cool because these white ones, when they first come out, they're actually pink. Let me see if there's like new leaves. So here you can see that these new leaves that are little tint of pink and will eventually turn white. So this is a really nice plant if you're into that variegation between white, pink, and green. You can find them in big box stores like Home Depot. It's always the general rule that if you find these plants in Home Depot, they're most likely easy to take care of. Another common one is this Hoya Carnosa J, which is just the ordinary green version of the Crimson Queen. So the ones that I have on top here are the more common ones. If you're looking for more uncommon Hoyas, I also have to recommend you the Hoya Matilda, which is known for its round, small leaves. And also I have the Hoya Australis Lisa that I can also recommend you. This is more on the common side, but it also has that cool variegation and also very easy to take care of. Another type of plant that I want to talk about are air plants. And most people think these plants are fake because they don't require any soil. Surprisingly, air plants are one of my first plants that I started owning. Back then, I did not like soil, so I was really looking for plants that did not require soil, and these air plants were the first ones that popped up. In its native environment, they have aerial roots in the back that latches onto trees, and the way that it absorbs nutrients is actually through the leaves. You can see that these leaves look a little bit fuzzy and it has a fuzz on it. That fuzz help it absorb nutrients and water better. In terms of care, these plants just need to be misted every once in a while when it looks dry. And I'll give you signs that it's dry when the tips of the leaves start to look like this. When it starts to be wrinkly, that's how you know it needs water. And once a month, you can give it a good soak by dipping it in water for 10 minutes. And that's how it gets all the nutrients and water that it needs. For these particular ones, I have not soaked it in water. I just missed it. I find that if you soak it in water and you don't let it dry properly, it's most likely going to get root rot. So I just like to mist it and keep it simple. These plants really tolerate any lighting condition. Right now, this one is living below my skylight. I also have some growing on my plant roll, just receiving light from the grow lights. This one in particular is the Zeographica. And here I have some other types of air plant. This is the Spanish moss. I would say this one requires a little bit more care. I find that they like more humidity. I think it's because the leaves are a lot thinner and tinier, it kind of looks like hair. So they lose water a lot quicker than a plant like this. So this one I miss daily and you can still see that here is beginning to dry a little bit. Because they don't require like a potted soil or potted medium to keep it alive, there's different possibilities on how you can style them and decorate them. So here I have them on my macrobay hangers, but I've also seen people put these, the smaller ones in terrariums. I've seen people put them on like shelves or as table decoration. The other day I saw these as Christmas tree decorations, which I thought was a pretty creative way to use them as well. 
A lot of people don't know that, but these plants actually flower. If you give it the right condition, these plants will flower for you in the summer. And their flowers are beautiful. They're these vibrant purple and red color flowers. Because these plants are so low maintenance, they also do really well during shipping. They don't require soil, so there's no mess also when it's being shipped. If you're like me and you don't like soil, I highly recommend starting with these air plants. Before we were just in my dining room where I show you some plants that need a little bit more light but here we're in my living room where I'm going to show you some plants that need low light. Not no light but low light conditions. So come on here. On the bottom of my shelf I have what's called ZZ plants. And they're characterized by, again, their waxy leaves. Some people even think these plants are fake whenever they come and look at my plants. These plants have almond-shaped leaves and it grows out from this very strong stalk. And this stalk is very hardy. You can tell that it retains a lot of water in here. This is a better example where you can see that these actually have a bulb on the bottom where it retains a lot of that water. So you can tell that these plants don't need to be watered that often. And they like to be underwatered compared to overwatered. I've had friends who tell me that they haven't watered this plant in weeks and it just looks completely fine. A lot of people neglect this plant because it just requires little to no care that you forget that you have this plant. It really doesn't need that much light. I've even had this living in a basement before and it was, you know, still growing and giving me new leaves, which is crazy. This plant doesn't really care for the humidity level. I've had this living in different types of humidity conditions and it does completely fine. In summary, this plant just does not die. It refuses to die in whatever condition you put it in. So if you're someone who's into low maintenance plants or you're just a beginner, I highly recommend this one. The specific one that I have right here is the ZZ Raven. This one is known for its darker foliage. The leaves come out a lighter green. Slowly it turns into that darker green color that's almost black. And this is another variety that I have here. This is the Zenzi, which is a smaller version of the regular ZZ plant. I actually don't have the regular ZZ plant with me, but I'll show you photos of that. I find that the leaves does this little curly motion that you don't see with the regular ZZ. So I find this one really cute and tiny. If I had to decide on a winner for today's video, it would definitely be the ZZ plant because it does not care whatever condition you give it in. It'll just adapt and continue to grow. The next plant I want to talk about though is a close runner up. It's the snake plants. Snake plants have a very distinctive feature. They always grow vertically and their leaves are very sculptural and architectural. When you touch it, they're also very succulent, which is also a sign to tell you that it's a very hardy plant. These plants require basic to no care just like the ZZ. They tolerate different lighting conditions. Here I have it right up against my north facing window where it receives a pretty good amount of light, but it can also tolerate very low light conditions like the plants that I have over here, which is on the deepest section of my room where it just doesn't really receive any light, but they continue to grow for me, which is crazy. This is a new stock that grew this summer. And then this one is a new leaf that just came out like a month ago. And they don't really need to be watered that much. They like to be on the underwater side, just like the other plants that I talked about. And I just water these maybe once every two weeks. And I don't even water until the water drains out because I'm afraid of overwatering it and leading to root rot. So I just like give it a little drizzle to make sure like it has some kind of moisture in the pot and it just does its own thing. The snake plant will show you signs that it needs to be watered. For example, this specific one is the moonshine snake plant. And you can tell that the older leaves are wrinkly. This is a sign that it needs to be watered and it's not happy. Once I moved the condition and I watered it more, it started to thrive again. And it even gave me a new pup over here. 
that looks so pretty. Look at the color of the leaf. The cool thing about the snake plant too is that it produces a lot of babies. So it's a perfect plant for propagating and giving it to your plant friends. And all you have to do to propagate these pups is just chop it off and stick it in water and it'll start growing roots for you. And once the roots are around one inch to two inch, you can just pot it in soil and there you have it, another plant. This night owl snake plant produced 20 babies at least. And this is a more mature pup that I got from just this one plant. And you can see here that it's growing like three other babies. I highly recommend the snake plant because it's so easy to take care of and they just grow a lot of pups for you that you can just give away to your friends. You're probably used to seeing the snake plants that you'll find in Home Depot or Lowe's, but there's actually a wider collection of snake plants than what you see in those stores. I have my snake plant collection video that you can check out if you're interested. Here I have some of them that I can just talk about briefly. This is the royal crown one that has this nice variegation and it grows from the center. And then here I have a golden one meat that I imported from Indonesia. It grows in this kind of spiral motion and it has these creamy leaves. If you guys want, I can do an update on these plants because since I've imported, they've done so much better and it's grown so much more. This plant is probably a runner-up in today's video on plants that just refuses to die. Not only are they cheap and easy to maintain, but also they come in different varieties and it's a fun to collect them all. In summary, these are the five different types of plants in my collection that are low maintenance and easy to care for. They are the ZZ plant, the snake plant, the Monstera deliciosa, the air plants, and the Hoyas. You can try to kill these plants, but they just refuse to die. And there are other plants that I did not mention because they're not in my collection, but I also highly recommend the Lucky Bamboo and the Poltos. If you're looking to add more of these plants in your collection, Save this video so that when you go to a plant shop, you know exactly what plants to buy. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye.